Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to these scary animations. I have a few good ones for you in today's episode, so if you guys are cool with that, down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go! Look, we're going to check out one more animation from Meat Canyon. This one is called POV the Mario Movie, but before we do that, make sure you subscribe to Meat Canyon, because they're always dropping, like, the best animations out there, and Peach already has interesting face mechanics, so let me just shut up and let's start this. Oh my god! Rainbow Road! Rainbow Road, dude! I know. I know. This oh. uh, This is a nostalgia I've never overload. seen the movie, by the way, so spoilers <laughs> Good God, for all of us. Mario. My diaper is so full. Oh, pee you, Mario. Mario movie is this a is bit stinky. of a dud. Am I crazy for thinking this? What did you just tweet? Uh, hey! Uh, what did you just tweet? <laughs> oh my god! Huh? Look at his hat! Uh, they captured thank it you. perfectly! Yep. This yeah. one's hitting me right in the childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, it's a me! Wahoo! <laughs> me, Canyon, why you gotta make all Mario lovers look like that? Actually, I might be him. I might be him. Now that I look at Mario's face a little harder, you know what Meat Canyon's animations remind me of? It reminds me of those old SpongeBob episodes when the characters would talk and then they would zoom into their face and it would be like so detailed and their faces would look a lot different than they were when they're zoomed out. It's kind of like the Ren and Stimpy and Spongebob thing where like once you zoom into their faces, it's just like a completely different face. Meat Canyon has those faces 24-7 and I think that's why I love it. Like it unlocks like that childhood nostalgia that I had with Spongebob and like Ren and Stimpy. Kira wants love to what? I'm trying to watch this anime. Just watch the movie, all right? Just focus on Thank you. perfectly. Uh, yep. This yeah. one's hitting me right in the childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, it's a me. Wahoo. Oh, and just, me. just watch the wow. movie, all right? Just focus on... Remember that? You remember okay, okay, seeing okay, that in the go. games? Go. Go. Yeah, I just think the pacing like trying to go feels up on a bit off for me, you know? What did you just say? I said the pacing feels a bit off. I just, yeah. Feels a bit rushed is all. You know, you it's a queen. I don't know. Oh, oh my god. The mushroom. The mushroom. He has the mushroom. I haven't been happy since I was seven years old. I mean, it's a Mario movie. You're in a children's movie, you ape. I mean, do you just go into children's movies and bitch and complain the whole time? I, uh, what are you gonna do, break down Paw Patrol next? Everyone in here uh, is in their 30s. So. <laughs> I'm actually 42. <laughs> I mean, it adds up. Mario came out in the 80s, so somebody in their 40s would absolutely love the shit out of seeing this in the theaters. I heard the movie was good. I've never seen it personally. You piece of shit. I uh, barely go to in the here's in their 30s. I mean, look around. It's true. Not everybody's you know, I mean, in, it is. Not everybody's 30. God. Listen, retard. No. No, I, no that's I in poor taste. Mario just that's used just, the I didn't mean to say, okay. didn't mean to say uh, it. Someone just dropped me back in my childhood. Just li listen. You're going to gobble this movie up. You're gonna say that it was everything you wanted out of a Mario film, okay? Because it is. I am a low stakes movie meant to get you to buy more product. And that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> I know, I certainly am. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, fuck that buddy. guy, bro. You have zero lives left. Dude, a little meat writer. <laughs> I, I just wanted a nice night out with my son, all right? I'm just glad he Get likes it. a little it. Italian all meat right, writer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Whatever. Mario. Mario. My diaper is so stinky. Okay, <laughs> Luigi. My Let's go visit the so Donkey smelly. Kong. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Now be sure to get a new diaper on, because uh, we have to take a big step here. Hey, what's he typing? Oh my god, a Koopa! Yeah. What the fuck is Mario he typing movie back there? Certainly uh, is no puss in boots. That's for sure. Oh, oh you motherfucker! <laughs> Like I said, Meat Canyon animations, top tier. And I feel like I'm spot on about what I just said about like when SpongeBob and Ren and Stimpy would zoom into the characters and you would see how like detailed and grotesque they are. Meat Canyon does that the entire time and it makes you feel uncomfortable but fascinated at the same time. It's like a weird feeling, but Meat Canyon captures that same effect that those shows have. Next video of today's episode is a Tinder horror story. This comes from MJV Animations. I've personally never used a dating app in my life, mostly because I have anxiety and I I don't want to deal with any of that type of stuff, but let me see how this one went down. My girlfriend left me two weeks before this. Don't care, didn't I ask. know two weeks is not long enough to fully process a breakup and start using Tinder, but I was desperate. 
you're desperate after two weeks? Like, calm down, dog. Within a few days, I and had I don't two mean girls dog I was talking to regularly. Like, dog like, I asked them both out on a date for separate days, hoping one of them would be a good match for me. Unfortunately, the first one ghosted me, though, so I was left with just the one, making me even more desperate. Hold on, hold on. I need to see the game. I need to see the game. So, he sent a message to Phoebe, and it said, Are you free today? And then Phoebe said, Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Do you want to meet? Where do you want to meet? So, what's your answer? This dude is so freaking thirsty! Oh, so, I was left with just My the one. My goodness! Making me even more desperate. In her picture, she seemed like my perfect type. Get this Blonde man a hair, glass of water, eyes, he's so thirsty. She's really attractive. Sheesh. Her personality, however, left much to be desired, at least over text. Let she was bland texts. and bad at conversation. I'll analyze. I'll but some people are just better in person, so I figured I'd give it a shot and continue with the date. Let me ask you all something. He said that maybe her personality was better in person. Are you a better texter or are you better in real life? Like some people really get freaky through text and then in real life, they're like a nun in church on a Sunday. Like me though, I'm freaky Zeke. I'm Zeke freaky. Like I don't even believe myself as I say that. <laughs> I am not freaky whatsoever. So I figured okay? I'd give it a shot and continue with the date. I get freaked out. I decided I on a cheap restaurant buddy. that she agreed was close sh enough to her. On the night of the date, I got ready and drove down, then texted her that I was there and stood out in front of the restaurant. Loser! I was five minutes early, so I wasn't expecting her to show up right away. But after waiting for 20 minutes, I tried calling her. The phone rang for a few, then she answered. Hey, where are you? I'm right outside the place. I said. I waited a few seconds. Hello? She hung up without yes. saying a word. Red flag. Great. Another girl Red ghosted me. Play. I was embarrassed and annoyed. I got back in my car and drove home. I made myself a bowl of cereal, then chilled on the couch and tried to forget about life for a while. I bet you that obviously the person was fake. I bet you that they found out who the guy was that was supposed to be on this date, followed him home, and now they're probably gonna rob his ass or do something. I passed out around eight, still on the couch. When I woke up, I reached for my phone to check the time, but I couldn't find it. I opened my eyes a bit wider and sat up, still searching for my phone. During my search, I caught something in the corner of my eye. My back door was slightly open, just barely, not even enough oh, to see through the shit, crack between the, the chills, door, bro. but open slightly enough so that it wasn't even with the wall. I got the chills that kill. I need to show you all the chills that kill. Hold on, I need to show you all the chills that kill. Look at the chills. I'm not flexing, but look at those chills, though. Kind of like that someone had pulled it partially chills. closed so that it wouldn't make the click sound. I stood still, looking around. Everything felt like it became so quiet. I took one last quick search for my phone, then gave up and walked over to the back door. It was just as I'd said, barely not closed. Barely not closed. I always kept every door locked, Wise words. so this was a terrifying thing to see after napping just a few feet away. Yeah. I thought maybe when the intruder saw me on the couch, they must have just left. But then I started thinking about my phone being gone. What if they'd stolen my phone? They would have had to be right in front of me, just inches away, probably watching me sleep. Yikes. A shiver ran through my creepy. body. These thoughts were just making me more scared. I pushed the door shut and locked it, praying that whoever it was had already left. I then walked around the first floor, checking the rooms, but not finding anything worth noting. Then I went upstairs, which for some reason had me more scared. Why am I so freaking creeped out? Like, this actually sounds like it's a true story, and it's giving me the chills. I walked down the hallway, <sighs> looking in each room, before I got to my bedroom. I looked around the room, under the bed, everywhere. No signs of anyone. I stepped back into the hall, closing the door. I just thought to myself how creepy this was, and tried to Super think of the best creepy. way to contact the police without my phone. But then I heard something. Oh shit. My bad. Quiet. Soft breathing, echoing inside the closet behind me. You got me. I froze, 
<laughs> you the got longer me I stood up. there, the more I horrified I was. All down my freaking back. I ran for the stairs and went out the front door. There was a gas station at the end of the block, so I ran all the way there and got them to call the police. By the time everything was settled, nobody was in my home anymore. I mean, they left. My phone was still missing, but that was the only thing that was gone. They robbed you and My account was backed up though, so it wasn't too hard to get a new phone and transfer all of my apps and data. A few weeks later though, I went back on Tinder and that's when I started putting pieces together. The girl that ghosted me and creepily answered my phone call no longer existed. I thought that it would actually be possible for them to have gone to the restaurant, but instead of meeting me, followed me home. Exactly. As for why they took my phone, I'm not sure. The only reason I can really think of is so that I couldn't call the police or show them their account. There's still a lot that doesn't make sense though, like why they only took my phone. I and mean, they did you check your body? What if you woke up with one less kidney and they just sold it in the black market or something? We're like? doing in my house. Maybe they didn't just take a phone. Sleeping. Maybe they took a lung. So he hid in the closet and then just started like breathing really creepily. But why though? I'm a 26 year old female, and at the time I was 23 and in college. Should I watch this one? I used Tinder throughout the second Yo, half of my college years. that first one was really years. good. I might as well watch this too. I wasn't exactly Let's looking do it, for a long-term relationship. I'm in the mood now. But I also wasn't entirely avoiding it either. If things seemed more serious, then I'd try. Otherwise, we'd just have some fun and move on. After school on Friday, I went back to my dorm and sat in bed, swiping left and right on the app. I was hoping to have something to do over the weekend. After some time, one of the guys responded. We talked it up for an hour or so, then he asked me out on a date for Sunday night. I agreed, though it was rather quick to ask me out. We texted for a while longer, mostly about school and hobbies. He said he went to the same school as me, yeah, but right. was in the dorm building on the opposite side of the campus. Yeah, right. This dude goes to, this ain't a real school university. Anyway, like on Saturday, we texted back and forth a few more same times. As you. And come Sunday, I met him at a popular restaurant not far from the campus. Over dinner, he didn't strike me as anything but a normal person. You sure? This dude? This dude looked like a normal person? He looked like he just got done serial killing. So normal that he was almost a little boring. I found that's, him attractive though, harsh. and thought he was maybe holding back on a lot due to just meeting me. You can be called an asshole, a douche, stinky, but boring? Boring gotta be one of the worst things you could be. Once we finished, we went outside and set another date for the next week. Nice. As I said Thank goodbye and started walking away, he asked me if I needed a ride home. Living in the dorms at the campus, I didn't have a car, so I just walked everywhere, including the restaurant. I was surprised he even had a car, since he lived at the school as well. Hmm. But I was even more surprised that he offered me a ride. It seemed like he was trying to make his move for tonight, which I wasn't expecting. But seeing as I enjoyed my time with him, and he was just like any other guy, I took him up on the offer. Okay, the okay. campus was a 25 minute walk away, so if nothing else, at least I'd be back sooner. He showed me over to his car, which was just an older black Honda SUV. I got into the passenger seat and he started driving. What? You got into the passenger seat, but you're in the back like you're in an Uber. As soon as we were on the road, What's happening here? things started to get awkward. Bro, I'm not a mathematician, but I it's not adding up. I tried making small talk, but he wasn't really responding. So I sat back and neither of us talked. After a few minutes, he took a left turn. The campus was to the right, in the complete opposite direction. Ah, shit. I felt a lump in my throat, and my body got stiff. That feeling of something awful about to happen had fallen over me. Hey, I think you missed the turn. I said nicely, trying to hide any hint of fear in my voice. No. He muttered. He just said no. I was no. looking over at him, but his gaze was locked on the road. Where are you taking me? He didn't respond. I didn't know what else to ask. I told him to let me out of the car 
in one last effort to get out of the situation without anything escalating. At that point, I'm done asking questions. I'm done talking. I'm kicking the shit out of the window, and I'm jumping out of that thing Keanu Reeves style. Just barrel rolling down the road. I don't care. I heard that if you can roll at the exact moment you make an impact on the ground, you actually don't get hurt. Don't try that at home because I'm just some asshole on the internet that doesn't know any better. But I heard that if you roll at a great time upon landing, you could spare yourself some damage. So I'm kicking the shit out of the window. I'm jumping out of that bitch. I'm rolling and I'm calling the cops as I'm rolling. I'm multitasking and I'm getting his license plate like 911. Hello, man, take your call. I'm like, yeah, um, this whack ass Honda station wagon looking ass car with license plate boop bop beep bop is driving down that way. Dude is giving me serial killer vibes. Please get on that ass and bam. That's how I just solved the crime. I solved the crime and captured one of the most wanted serial killers this side of the Mississippi. That's what I do. He still didn't respond. The further out he drove, the more remote the area became. My head was aching from the fear of getting too far out to be able to find any way out of this. I still had my phone in my pocket, which I knew he was going to take as soon as we stopped wherever he was taking me. My plan, and really my only plan, was to try to take out my phone as quickly as possible and dial 911 before he would have time to react. Do it, do it, do it. Punch him in the back of the head. I waited too. until he started making a turn, and right when he looked the other way, I pulled my phone out and with shaky hands dialed 911. He noticed immediately, trying to grab my phone mid turn oh, and jerking the car. I was able to keep myself away from grasp while the phone rang, and as soon as I heard a voice on the other side, I yelled for help, saying the street names and direction we were going. Very the man observant was still fighting too. me for my phone, hitting me and pulling me car toward him. Car swerving and she's getting grabbed and she recognizes the, the, the fight, street names? He lost MVP control of the car and ran off the road straight into a speed limit sign. I was dizzy and my vision was blurry, probably from a concussion. But I could hear the operator on the phone talking from somewhere under my seat. I almost forgot the situation I was in, but once it came back to me, I immediately looked over. The windshield was shattered and the airbags were out, but the man I was with was gone. I tried to see out the windows, but he was nowhere. I didn't even remember seeing the windshield shatter or the airbags go off so I might have even been unconscious for a few seconds or minutes without knowing it. Hmm. I searched for my phone, telling the operator what happened and that I was okay. Just casually bleeding Officers from the front of the head, no after. problem. It's no problem. I had no lasting injuries, just some pains around my body. But what hurts the most is that I was so sure they would catch the man, having his name, description, and license plate. Right? But I was wrong. Oh, okay. The car was stolen the day before, which was probably why he abandoned it after the crash. His name was likely fake, although it was a really generic name anyway. Bro, nobody spells their name John like that. Obviously, that name is faker than my dad's boobs. And his Tinder account was removed. Of course it was. So, all they have is a description of what he looked like. Yeah, he looked like an asshole. I should have been more careful. And I definitely have been ever since. Good. What he planned on doing with me is something too awful for me to even think about. I just really hope that he's not out there trying to do the same thing to someone else. Fuck that creepy ass smile. So what we learned from this everybody from back to back Tinder horror stories is one, make sure that you verify who you're talking to. Um, maybe like video call them or whatever. I feel like I'm just talking like an old person right now. Video call them? What the fuck? Just make sure you like you FaceTime them or something. Maybe if they have like a TikTok, be like, hey, what's your TikTok account? Or you're their IG, you know, be like, hey, what's your IG? Let me see if you're real. And um, FaceTime them, you know, get some live video going on and meet in a public place. If they offer you a ride or something just seems off or fishy, don't even try to like, you know, just risk it. And just be safe, everybody. Like if you're gonna be using these dating apps, just be safe. It's 2023, like people can fake stuff all the time. So just please be safe. Like you don't want to have a horror story about a dating app under your belt. So please. 
Just, just be safe and just use common sense when doing these things. Last video of today's episode comes from ACM Official. It is called Clap Clap, and I am not going to make any jokes because I am a mature adult and I'm above those types of things, okay? So we're not going to make any jokes about Clap Clap, okay? Perfect. Or are Sarah, we? you got to come see this. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. I'm above that, remember? I'm above that. Even though I'm lying to myself, I'm above that. Clap, clap. Sarah. Sarah. Not that many clap jokes you can make with this one. I'm trying to think, actually. Come check this out. Clap, clap. Come on. Bro look like Chris Hemsworth alter ego. Hems Chemsworth. Weren't you going to talk to Isaac about toys in our room? I did. Okay, maybe I forgot. I'll tell him again tomorrow. What you smiling about? Do you remember the clapper? <laughs> yeah, you know the thing where you clap and the lights turn on and off? Okay. I was going to say, Just I'm clap. the clapper. It's cool, right? Yeah, it's so cool. That's a good excuse to tell the kids, right? Like if the kids are like, Mom, Dad, how come I hear clapping noises? And they're just like, oh, we're just turning on the lights on and off. Just, you know? That is cool, though. It was ahead of its time. Like nowadays, we have Alexa. We have Siri. We have all this technology that can do that. Open the blinds. Freaking make us coffee. We can do all these cool things. But back then... It's cool, wow, it right? Like, Whoa. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> Try it. It's... Come on, it'll be fun. You have to do it twice. You have to clap twice. Dylan? Oh, that's cool. This isn't funny. That's interesting. <sighs> I'm going to bed. Come on, do it. Do it. I thought somebody was going to be right in front of her. All that from some clapping? Come on now. Dylan, what are you doing? The storm is... All I could see was darkness. You're not making sense. No! <laughs> Dylan? Huh. Dylan? Dylan? I don't get why, though. I hate when cameras do that. What are you doing? Mommy, where's Daddy? He's just hiding, sweetie. Daddy got a silly little clapper, and he's playing a joke on Mommy. You may wear a clap like this. Where you go, Molly? I... Huh. Okay. That wasn't as scary as I thought. I don't get what happened there. Like, did a circuit break, and then all of a sudden, every time they clap, they go into this other dimension where it's just complete darkness? And then it depends who claps, right? Like, if the lady clapped, and then the guy came back, and then he clapped, does that mean anybody that's in the area is gone? Or anybody that hears the clap? Like, what about the little kid? Like, what if the kid and the dad were in the room, and then the mom clapped? Would both of them be gone? 
or just one person? Like, make it make sense, or at least explain it to me a little bit better. All right, everybody, but that's going to do it for this episode of Reacting to These Scary Animations. Hopefully, you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you give it one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cove Scouts is that dude.